Hello everyone, I'm Hari and I will be walking you through editing the Instructions to Bidders document, also known as ITB. Let's get started. The Instructions to Bidders document helps the contractor or bidder understand the additional aspects of the project that cannot be conveyed through the plans but still need to be included as a part of the bid and ultimately their contract. Before we dive into the ITB document, Let's take a look at Microsoft Word's four draft modes that will help you keep track of the changes while editing the document. The options are Original, Original Markup, Final, and Final Markup. The Original option shows the pre-edited document even after you make your changes. The Final option shows the final text after you have edited the document. The Original Markup and Final Markup are very helpful tools in keeping track of the changes that you make to the document. For example, if you delete text, it will still show the text, but it will show a strike through line through the text to indicate that the text has been deleted. The markup options will also show all comments that we have added to the document that will help you fill out the various divisions of the ITB. Now let's take a look at the individual sections of the ITB. The first section lists all the attachments that will be included as a part of the bid set that will be sent to the contractor bid pool for the purposes of bidding. The list will include the plan sets, reports and calculations from the various consultants, and also the soils report and landscape plans if they are a part of the project scope. Division 01 states the general requirements for the project. While you may want to read all the points listed under this division, you are only required to edit certain sections in this division. Section 9 is one such part which will need your careful review and input. This section states that the general contractor will be charged with a fine of $200 per day if he or she exceeds the time frame quoted for the project completion. You may retain this section if schedule is paramount to you. But keep in mind that this clause may potentially discourage contractors from submitting bids as they cannot foresee all of the delays that may occur during the lifetime of a project. A good number of our clients remove this clause from the bid document. Section 11 is one of the most important portions of this ITB. It has three options, owner provide and contractors to install, owner provide and owner's vendor to install, and contractor provide and contractor to install. The general practice is for the owner to purchase all the material and have your contractor install all the materials on site except the countertops and garage doors. However, there may be a special case where the owner can purchase the materials or appliances and have their preferred vendor install the item on site. If this is the case, then place an X in third column. Since the garage doors and countertops are always owner provide and owner's vendor to install, there is an X mark by default in that column. There is yet another option. Contractor provide and contractor to install where the contractor will purchase all the materials for the owner and will have them install on site. However, in this option, the contractor will charge a markup for all the materials he or she purchases on your behalf. So this option will end up being more expensive for the owner but may be the right choice for some homeowners that feel that they do not have the time, capability, or interest to purchase certain materials themselves. Read all the comments provided beside the rows that will give you instructions on the items that need to be edited and suggestions that will help you choose your options. The next section has a link to the lien release forms that your contractor and subcontractors will be using. A lien waiver is a document from a contractor, subcontractor, or supplier to the owner stating they have received payment and waive any future rights on the property of the owner for the amount paid. The progress payment option is the most commonly used type of lien release. For more information on lien waivers, visit the Contractor State License Board and search for liens. Let's move on to Division 02. From this division onwards, you will have to look out for text marked in green. Green text just means that the specific item requires your input or edit. In the first section of this division, you can choose which of the marked utilities needs to be new versus existing. 
For a new construction, you will definitely need all new utilities. Undergrounding your overhead electrical service is optional in most cities, but in some cities it's mandatory. Please check with your jurisdiction for this requirement. Also from this division on, you will notice that there are three parts to every bid item. The first one is the qualifications, which lists the item that will be included in the bid. The next section is the items that need to be excluded from the bid list. For example, in wood fencing section, if you plan on retaining your existing fence, then you will list it under the exclusions and all the items below qualifications section can be removed. In other words, qualifications and exclusions are mutually exclusive. The third section is the alternate section. You can add the items that you are considering to include as a part of the scope of work but would first like to know the price before deciding. The bidder will provide a price for this alternate item and you may choose to include it or remove it from the final bid. Scroll down and continue to make edits as required. You may encounter a section where you don't know which option to choose or may want to add an option that is not in the list that we provide with the original document. In that case, just add your option to the list or leave a comment by selecting the text and clicking on the new comment button under the review tab. We will review your comment and edit the text accordingly. Let's also look at Division 11. This section requires you to input the list of appliances that will need to get installed on site. Providing a complete list of all the appliances will aid the contractor to come back with a more accurate bid for your project. Continue to scroll down the document and furnish all the required information so the bidder has all the information he or she needs to price out all the items for the final bid. Hope this video was helpful in filling out your ITP document. Please let us know if you have any questions. Have a nice day.